Welcome to First Reading, the Old Testament lectionary podcast for preachers, teachers, and all of God's creatures, which is relevant for this week's episode. Yeah. I'm Tim McNinch. And I'm Rachel Wren. We are coming to you today with an episode for Trinity Sunday, June 7th, 2020, and it is one of the best texts in the whole Bible, which I know I've said before, and this time I really mean it, which I also know I've said before. <laughs> Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 4, a It's fantastic. It's a great, great story. Um, it's also rather large. Uh, so before we get into this giant chunk of text, uh, we have a couple of things we want to make you aware of for the upcoming summer months and what we're going to be doing here on the podcast. That's right. So there are a, a couple first readings that are given each week in the Revised Common Lectionary, and we're going to be following the one that uh, kind of follows sequentially, starting here at the opening passage of the Bible and runs through, I think, uh, parts of Judges and takes us all the way to Advent. So we'll be kind of following along in this sequential reading. And uh, for some of you, maybe also looking at the narrative lectionary or have uh, preacher friends who are following the narrative lectionary, the passages that we co cover here in the next several months, some of them will overlap with the narrative lectionary. So we'll actually put a link to that, uh, that series, that list of passages on our website so that you can see where the overlaps are and, uh, you know, share relevant episodes with people that you think might benefit from them. Yeah, if you haven't uh, come up with a, a preaching series for this summer either, um, these um, sequential readings really come up with some great Genesis texts. So I would highly recommend following the sequ sequential readings for the summer, not just because we're covering them, but because you're going to hit some of the great old um, stories mm -hmm. that, uh, especially for some of your older folks, they've grown up on. And, and sometimes we don't talk about very much in the lectionaries. Yeah. Or if you have people that are kind of uh, less biblically literate, yeah. this is a way to introduce folks to some of the greatest hits of the you know Old Testament narrative. Yeah. So it's definitely a, a great, a great way to kind of work your way through a big section of of the Hebrew Bible. Absolutely. And And what a better way to start off than the very first text of the Bible where the Trinity is fully present. Right, Tim? <laughs> well, well, we can talk about that, uh, but you know, it is it is Trinity Sunday, and there is you know in in one twenty six, let us make humanity in our image. So uh, you know, we'll have to think about what we want to make of that us. <laughs> now, uh, as I was preparing for this, I am assuming that most of you who are preaching are a little bit biblically literate. I'm hoping so. And so this being the opening passage of the Bible is probably one that's familiar to you. So what I wanted to do in this episode of First Reading is give you a handful of preaching pitfalls related to this to this text, and then just a couple of preaching angles, and, and that should serve us well this week. I think so. I think that's a great way to start, especially because sometimes when we're faced with these familiar texts, it's like, man, what am I going to come up with <laughs> out of this again? So, Yeah, yeah, which is kind of the feeling I had as I was trying to prepare for this episode. <laughs> well, what do you got? How are you going to start us off? So let me just throw out a series of preaching pitfalls on this creation story in Genesis. The first one is kind of the reverse of what I just said about it being such a familiar text. I would say don't assume that this is as familiar to your congregation mm -hmm. as it is to you. I'd be careful when you're preaching not to use too much language like, as we all know, mm -hmm. or, you know, this is such a familiar text to us all, because it might not be. Even for people who've been in the church a long time and may know that the Bible begins with a creation story or maybe even the words in the beginning, many of them may not have even actually read through this story mm -hmm. or know many of its details. So, uh, you know, bring it to life because it, it may be something that is vaguely familiar to people, but you could, you could really help it come to life for them. You could. I think that's a great point, Tim, especially that's a tendency I fall into all the time is assuming that the texts I know and love are ones that everyone knows and mm -hmm. loves. Um, a, a one idea you to, for making this a little bit more familiar to your congregation is to tap that person with the dramatic flair for reading in your in yeah, your congregation yeah. and have them just go at it. I mean, there's there's rhythms to this verse, these verses that lend themselves to dramatic readings in a way that could really bring it out for your congregation. So I think that's a great point. 
I heard this read once where the the pastor was using uh, was kind of speaking in the voice of the narrator, but whenever the voice of God spoke, it was somebody who was up in the back of the balcony, oh, nice. booming out over the congregation. It was it was really a cool take. That's sweet. All right, so so that's that's pitfall number one. Number two, I'd say uh, we we mentioned just a minute ago about the us that's in verse one twenty six and. Quite often, that is pointed to as uh, a revelation of the Trinity here in the opening chapter of the Bible. Mm. And I would just caution you to not make too much of that. That's It's pushing the grammar of the Hebrew a little past its breaking point. Mm. The, the us that's there in 126 is probably in context God speaking to the divine council, all of the heavenly beings that are surrounding God. It's also possible that it could be sort of the royal we as well, God speaking in the first person, but using elevated language to talk about, let us do this. <laughs> um, so those are the more likely exegetical interpretations of the us in 126. I'm not saying that you shouldn't talk about the Trinity at all here. It is Trinity Sunday <laughs> after all. But just be careful not to, to push your exegesis on that one word in one verse too far. So so don't do that. Don't push the us too far. But what would be a way that be appropriate then to talk about Trinity in terms of this text on Trinity Sunday? I mean, there's uh, certainly the, the, the sort of three persons of the Trinity are not explicit here, mm -hmm. but there is a sense of God as uh, the creator and the spirit is at work in this text. Uh, sort of the, the wind or breath that's hovering or brooding over the waters. Mm -hmm. And um, in a way, the creation of humanity is not, you know, in any way sort of an explicit reference to Jesus, but it shows a, a, a partnership mm -hmm. in the creation between the divine and the human in a way that um, for those of us who are looking at this backwards through the lens of Christianity, see Jesus's divinity and humanity together. Mm, yeah, I, I love that idea of partnership, too. I think if you're if you are a divine being, which is three in one, you have to work together, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're going to get anything done. So, yeah, that theme of partnership could be a really nice one to lift up, too. Definitely. Any more, any more pitfalls that we should look out for? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe one more that's worth mentioning for sure, and that's um, in one twenty-seven, the creation of humanity as male and female. I would encourage you as preachers not to make too much of that gender binary that's there. Uh, that's, I think, a mistake that is made. I think, and and this is my own exegetical interpretation of that verse, that this is not talking about the creation of two absolute genders and only two absolute genders of humanity. I think the term male and female here is what we call, in, you know, a, to use the technical term, a merism. A whatism? A merism, which is basically giving two terms that are meant to encompass everything in between and around. Mm. So I think the, the theological point of talking about God creating humanity, male and female, is saying that all of humanity bears the image of God, male, female, everything in between and outside of that binary. We're all included. Uh, this isn't just the creation of one male mm. somewhere at some time. This is talking about what it means to be human, however that's expressed uh, in terms of gender. Yeah, I, I think that's lovely. And I, I do think it would be worth, uh, this could be one of those points where what's familiar to us as preachers might be unfamiliar to our people um, because a lot of people are still surprised that there are two creation stories in the Bible and that um, in this one, it's not Adam who's created first and Eve who's taken out of his rib. They are created at the same time. So it's, again, worth not glossing too quickly past that, but just naming that reality that there are two. And in this one, this is the presentation, which which might just kind of, you know, give someone something to chew on for a little bit, huh? The the Bible is maybe not quite as clear on that angle as I thought it was. So, uh, all right. So those are the pitfalls. How about the angles? Where where did you come down on how you'd preach this text? <laughs> well, it's such, it, as you say, it's one of the best passages <laughs> in the Bible. It's, uh, it's got so much in there. I just couldn't pick one preaching angle. And so... Um, 
because this has ended up as the opening chapter of the Bible, it becomes paradigmatic for so many different themes and ideas that are get traced through the Bible. And so I guess my my preaching angle, my tip would be to maybe pick one of the themes that is relevant to your community that's found in this text and kind of run with it, whether it's uh, a key word or a couple of verses, and really sort of explore what's going on there in this text. Uh, here's just a, 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 a blast you with a list of some of the themes that, that I see here. Nice. There's the creative power of God's word, the, the, that God speaks the creation into existence here. There's the sense of order that's in creation in this particular passage, in the way that uh, sort of on the first three days of creation, you have the creation of the sky, the sea, and the land. And then in the second set of three, uh, days four through six, you have sort of the inhabitants of each of those spaces, the sky, the sea, and the land. The whole thing is sort of presented as being very, very ordered. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sort of a value that's there among the, the authors of this text. Uh, the, the theme that God keeps taking a look at what God has done and calling it good, mm. tov, mm. Uh, which which could mean good or beautiful. Like there's there's a lot in here about the, the goodness and beauty of creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that could be a theme that you could run with. I did a little mini research project on that word tov once. And one of the other ways you find it used a lot is good for, as in like good for the purpose that it was intended for. Um, so that's, mm -hmm. I mean, you could just take that one word tov and, and take it down these different routes for God's people. That'd be a really cool sermon. Yeah, it's good for you. It's good. <laughs> it's tov. It's so tov. <laughs> yeah. Any other themes that uh, you saw lifted yeah, up? Yeah, sure. Uh, when we get to the creation of humanity here, uh, I already mentioned humanity as the image of God. Boy, isn't that a theme that you could really mm. run with? Mm. Um, for sure. Uh, when when the humans are created, they're given responsibility to care for the creation. Mm. Mm. That's a really important theme. Mm -hmm. That's that's here in this opening creation story. The the responsibility that we have among all of God's creatures to tend for and care for the creation. And then, of course, the, the creation story as it bleeds into chapter two here talks about God resting on the seventh day, resting from the work of creation. Did you know that making creation was hard work for God? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> God saw fit to take a break. That that was a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, the whole concept of the, of the Sabbath and of rest, uh, that's a theme that you could run with here, too. You know what I never thought of till just now? Um, and, and it kind of struck me because we're in the midst of quarantining from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, and we find creation getting a break from humanity a little bit. We find um, pollution levels lowered and that sort of thing. It strikes me that perhaps God needed a break and knew that creation needed a bit of a break as well. Um, that that the the break was tov. It was good for both yeah. God and for creation too. There you go. There's your there sermon. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, any of those themes would be great to pick up on. Um, and I'll just give another example. Uh, if, if uh, by the time that, that this episode goes to press, we're still in the throes of the COVID-19 crisis, uh, I think it would be really interesting to hear a sermon about uh, the way that social distancing is an application of our human responsibility to rule over creation, mm. as verse 26 and 28 describe it. Mm. That rather than putting our individual needs first, the, our distancing is actually a way to promote life by mm. disciplining the created order according to the responsibility that God has given us for it and sort of setting bounds on the wild proliferation of a virus. Mm. So, I mean, that would be a really interesting way to kind of take this in a, in a new and timely angle. Ah, oh, nice. I would be excited to hear any of those sermons. <laughs> those are, <laughs> thanks, Tim. Those are really helpful. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, preachers, this is a text that as long as you're using it responsibly, you can do so much with it. Absolutely. Well, folks, have a great uh, Trinity Sunday as you preach this. And remember that starting next week, we're going to continue with some of the greatest hits of the Old Testament, especially walking our way through Genesis. We do hope you join us. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun with these texts. 
If you do decide to join us, maybe tell a friend about your plan to preach on the greatest hits this summer. And if they're wondering where they could get a resource for doing that, where should they go, Tim? How about uh, firstreadingpodcast.com? Oh, what a great idea. Until next time, preachers, I'm Rachel Wren. And I'm Tim McNinch, hoping that your ordinary time gets to actually be ordinary at some point. (laughs) 